What is going on, fellow Wastelanders? Shock Radio here with a pretty massive update from the devs. They are changing so many things in the next update. Alternative ram damage mechanics and changes to energy consumption and energy supply of parts. Now, a lot of this, a lot of us have been waiting for. Alternative ram damage mechanics. Indeed, there has been a lot wrong with ram damage mechanics, and many people have been wanting them to fix it. Now, as far as this energy consumption and energy supply parts, no idea why the heck they're messing with that, but we're going to get right into this update. And as always, let me know in the comments below what you think about all these, these changes, and these are a lot of changes. Hello, today we would like to bring you a new variant of the ram damage mechanic and the corresponding changes to the parameters of parts as well as new perspective on power consumption and how much power generators and cabins should provide. Now, just a reminder that all these new features described are not final. They're actually going to run multiple rounds of the test server, so very much positive that a lot in this, uh, these patch notes are going to change based on the first round of feedback from the test server. So alternative RAM damage mechanic. Why are the current mechanic getting changed? Well, the implementation of the current RAM damage mechanics has a number of problems that cause it to be unstable in combat conditions. We won't go into technical details, but here are a few examples. When colliding at certain angles, enemy parts may not be recognized and the damage will go nowhere. Ramming at high speed may result in the colliding part not taking damage while the parts behind it will take damage. The calculation of damage value has an overly strong dependence on speed, which can cause damage to be massive when using boosters. So these are all very, very good examples of why they needed to make these changes. And I think when they started making these changes, it just became a trickle effect of like, they needed to fix this and this and this. Once they changed one thing, it broke another. So I think that's kind of, uh, this, this, these update notes are a combination of like them trying to fix this one ram damage mechanic and it just being like, causing them a lot of other issues that they had to fix. So kudos to them for trying to, uh, to balance the game out. Let's see what they got to say. Therefore, ramming is too often unpredictable for players and can either critically damage the enemy or not damage them at all, especially at high speeds. We would like to present you with an alternative mechanic which should work much more consistently in terms of damage implementation, locating the parts, as well as having a narrower range of damage values. The essence of the new mechanics. The new mechanics are very similar to how the big projectiles deal damage. Now we will simplistically describe how it works and what it depends on. Now after ramming, an invisible cylinder is formed at the point of contact. Enemy parts within the cylinder are sorted as they get further away from the point of contact. Then damage is applied to them sequentially until it is spent or the parts in the queue run out. It works the same way on the enemy side as well. This search algorithm eliminates the first two problems described in the previous section. So this in invisible cylinder supposedly gets rid of the uh, may not recognize and damage will go nowhere. And then also parts behind um, the, the part taking damage takes damage. So they're fixing that with this one. The diameter of the cylinder is individual for both players and depends on the mass of their armored vehicles. The higher the mass, the larger the area of damage will be. This makes so much sense, guys. How often in the game you have a tiny little car slam into a giant monstrous build and do so much damage? And like, for what? It just never, never made sense, right? It's like having a little Honda slam into a giant 18-wheeler and like the 18-wheeler loses a wheel and the Honda goes away unscuffed. You know what I mean? So they're kind of, they're fixing this. Now you get hit by a truck and cross out, you're going to feel a truck. You're not, you know what I mean? So it, it, I, th I actually, I think this is going to be pretty interesting. Although I am absolutely not looking forward to it for my Leviathan. We'll see how it affects Leviathan. The height of the cylinder and its direction are identical for both players and depend on the difference of their speed vectors. The values of the speeds and their directions relative to each other are taken into account. Here are a few examples. Let's say the speed of the first player is 100 kilometers and the speed of the second player is 50. 
players move towards each other in the same line. During collision, the cylinders will be directed along the same line. A speed value of 150 kilometers will go into the calculation of the height. Player 1 catches up with player 2. As in the first case, they move along the same line. The cylinders will again be directed along this line, but the height will be less because the speed of 50 kilometers an hour will go into its calculation. The speeds of the players are directed at an angle relative to each other. Depending on the angle, the height calculation will range from 50, the minimum possible when one player catches up with the other, to 150. A head-on collision. The direction of the cylinder will also depend on the direction of both speeds. The final damage value is calculated depending on the mass of the vehicle and how much the speeds of the armored cars have changed after the collision. For example, if the collision occurred tangentially and the speeds hardly changed, then the total damage will be minor. If the speed of at least one of the players has changed significantly after the collision, the damage will also increase significantly. So here's why this scares me for Leviathan. I, I am the worst at running into those giant brick builds when I'm running my Leviathan in clan battle. This, because of the game mechanics, my Leviathan uses a lightweight cabin, and although it is like 10 times more heavy than the heaviest brick build, uh, the game sees my light cabin against their heavy cabin, and my Leviathan comes to a stop. Well, does this mean my Leviathan is absolutely going to collapse from damage now? I hope they change that. I hope, like, just because you have a lightweight Leviathan cabin, um, they, yeah, just they, they need to fix that. A lightweight Leviathan cabin is still heavier than the heaviest regular build. So hopefully they adjust that for Levy Wars. Otherwise, I'm going to be a very sad radio when I run into the next brick. Therefore, dealing and taking retaliatory damage will be unique for different vehicles and game situations due to the fact that when two players collide, both damage and possible depth of the damage calculations, the same resulting speed and mass of both players will be taken into account. Slower and heavier vehicles will deal more damage, often dealing it in the outer area, while lighter and faster ones will deal less damage, but mostly along the line into the interior. So you guys know the, the cabin, the savior cabin? That's actually a cabin that gives you more damage based on how uh, hard you ram someone. This update might actually bring that cabin back somehow, and we'll see. What do you guys think about that cabin? Let me know in the comments below. So with all this into account, they had to change the parts of everything. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, all of your builds will need rework again, because we cannot get a break. Due to the changes described above, the parameter of parts related to the new mechanics have been revised. As the parts with resistance to ram damage now block damage more effectively, and the bonuses to ram damage are more consistently implemented. On the current game server, ramming and melee damage resistance is a single parameter. We have split them into two separate ones to allow for more flexible configuration. Please note that on the test server, the previous resistance only works for ramming damage, and the melee damage resistance has a temporary saw icon. So keep that in mind, a little temporary icon until they, they uh, get the, the real icon they want. So bumpers. I'm not going to actually like go through and read every single stack, guys, but we are going to talk about a few of them. The parameters shown in brackets are from the game server, and those outside the brackets are shown from the test server. So they're changing everything. Like the power score, the durability, the mass, resistance to ram damage, resistance to melee damage, letting damage through, like pass through damage for a certain uh, bumpers, and bonus to ram damage. So this is going to drastically affect everybody's build for the simple fact that all of the masses are changed. Some are heavier, some will be uh, lighter. We'll see how it goes, but... This is going to greatly affect everyone's build. So, you know, make sure you're prepared for that when this update comes. All in all, I think this update will be very interesting. It does suck that, like, all of our builds need to change for these kind of things. But I do think this is probably going to be for the better. This is going to lead to more realistic physics that I think, I think we can all appreciate. So they are definitely changing a lot with these parts. Like I said, I'm not going to 
uh, read through every single thing that's changing. But you know, as you can see, like the weight is going down on the freight train plow. Pretty cool. Pretty pretty awesome. Looks like actually a lot of things are getting a decrease in mass. A lot of the big big parts. That's interesting. If I'm reading it correctly, it looks like a lot of things are actually going to go down in mass. While some things are going to go up, like the smaller parts are going up in mass and the bigger parts are going down in mass. So that's very interesting. Uh, with this, they also uh, moved a few structural parts over to the bumper section, which is actually pretty cool. So uh, a few of these parts in here, the bore, the haulback, Torino rear, uh, flaming rakes. If you guys are familiar with these, like some of these look like they would be bumpers, you know? And now they're finally becoming bumpers. Like the Devilry, that kind of always gave me bumper vibes. Well, now it's a bumper. So they're adding more bumpers to the game by just moving some of the structural parts over to the bumper section. So that should actually help the durability of a lot of builds. Because bumpers are definitely the some of the best uh, defensive parts you can put on your ride. So passive melee weapons are also changing like the, the stats of all the passive melee weapons. You know, the blades, the, the cutters, the incisor, the hatchets. Again, durability increasing or decreasing for a lot of them. Mass is either increasing or decreasing for a lot of them. You know, pass-through damage is going to be a thing. This could be bad. I know a lot of these bumpers people rely on very much so for absorbing damage. So with this letting damage through... This is going to be a, a bit of a negative consequence of this update. And to be a little bit more strategic about where you, what, what bumpers you're putting where. So keep that in mind. King of birds. Very nice, very nice. Anyway, so other parts. The Cerberus, Bastion, Trax, ML200, Bigram, Shiv, and Shiv ST meat grinders all added 50% resistance to melee damage. Very nice. Love my Shiv wheels back in the day anyway. I haven't used them in a long time, but... I used to absolutely love grinding with shiv wheels. Garita added 25% resistance to melee damage. I know Garrett has always seemed a bit flimsy to melee, so we'll see how that affects them. The uh, Almighty Tusk, what are they doing to the Tusk? Bonus to ram damage reduced from 200 to 100%. Changed the collision of the front part of the cabin for more stable realization of the ram. Bonus from one charge of the perk reduced from 60% to 40. The distance from one perk charge reduced from 100 to 80. Uh, this looks like an overall nerf on the Tusk. And like uh, the Tusk is, is just good in like medium power score PvP. So we'll see what this means. I know a lot of PC players absolutely love using the Tusk build. I see the Tusk build more prominent on PC than console. Uh, what do you guys think about these changes to the Tusk though? Or is this going to make it like better... Uh, with all the other changes, or do you think this is overall going to be a nerf to the Tusk Cabin? Frames, resistance to ram damage has been increased from 25 to 35%. Added 25% resistance to melee damage. The frames should be pretty, pretty safe. The Goblin, they're doing the same thing. Adding resistance to melee and bonus to ram damage from 200 to 150 Basically all, all the weapons, like the Goblin, Gremlin, even Draco, which I'm kind of sad that the Firebugs don't have any resistance to melee. <laughs> because the Dracos are always so hidden, you know, like, they're oftentimes not even ramming things. And the, the Firebugs are so open, and they're just ramming things head on. But I get it, the Draco's all spiky, and like, yeah, and it looks all melee versus the Firebug, just the, you know, looks a bit flimsy. So, anyway, I... I, I Part of me wishes they would add some melee resistance to my firebugs. Not going to lie. Don't hate me too much, guys. All right, so the Borer, Buzzsaw, Lacerator, Mauler, Harvester, and the Tribdis added 50% resistance to melee damage. So a lot is changing. Uh, so as far as the testing go, we would like to change the RAM mechanics in the next update. So we may ask you to test as many game situations as possible. Collisions with cars of different masses and speeds, with and without bumpers, and passive melee weapons. Share your feedback. It will be very helpful in subsequent adjustment of parameters of both the mechanics and the parts. So guys, the devs are really going to try to listen to us uh, on this one, it seems. So definitely, if you have access to the test server, 
try the test server and give them honest feedback. You know, don't just look at this update and be like, oh, it's all crap. No one asked for this. Like, try to embrace it and, and see what it's like. Overall, I think these changes could be pretty, pretty unique and awesome, to be honest with you. Uh, please describe the situations in which you think too much, too little damage was inflicted after the collision, approximate mass, speed, which parts collided, whether the collision was head-on, tangential, angled, any, any other details you consider necessary. Do you find the performance of ramming more stable relative to the game servers? Have you noticed any errors, illogicalities in its works? How do you feel about parameter changes related to parts ramming? Do you feel it's necessary to convert the above list of structural parts into bumpers? So they're definitely looking for feedback here, guys. Let's, let's give it to them. Now, this next, the next part of this update is stuff that I'm like, why? Why? Why did you have to go this far? You, just, you could have stopped it right there, Tarkin. That's it. They just had to go that extra mile. I don't know why or if this is going to be necessary. But there is changes in energy consumption and energy supply. Uh, experimental. So they, uh, they have no plans to introduce it into the game as part of one of the upcoming updates. Its future fate will depend on the results of testing and further refinement. Okay, so that's kind of good. So this next part is most likely not coming soon. But they're going to try to refine it and get it worked out. So that, that's good. I, di I didn't read that red, the red text earlier. So... This actually is pretty nice. Let's talk about what these changes are. At the moment, one unit of energy is a too significant value relative to the total energy limit. This problem becomes particularly apparent among hardware, the majority of which consumes one energy, even though the modules themselves are not equivalent to each other. Some of the modules have a strong effect, and making it weaker can make it simply redundant and increasing the power consumption to two units can make it weak. The other modules are too situational and therefore hardly used. In their case, amplifying the effect would not remedy the situation in any way, and removing energy consumption would force the restrictions or negative effects to be imposed. We would like to test the changes, the essence of which is that all energy values would be doubled and then some of them would be increased or decreased by one unit. In this form, one unit of energy would be equivalent to 0.5 units of energy on current game servers, which would allow assigning a more fair energy consumption to a part relative to its efficiency and diversifying builds. What has changed? The changes are primarily related to modules and cabins. All weapons and modules not listed below have had their energy drain doubled. Some of them may have had their power scores slightly changed. The values before the changes are indicated in brackets. Currently, lightweight and medium cabins give the same amount of energy, while heavy cabins give one unit less. We would like to test a variant in which light cabins have one unit, 0.5 in the old system, more than medium cabins, and heavy ones have one unit of energy less than the medium ones. We've also changed the progression of how much energy cabins give depending on their rarity. So they're switching it up based on rarity, not just like lightweight, medium, heavy. Um, that's crazy. A common cabin, 21 energy for a light, 20 energy for a medium, 20 energy for a heavy, wild. A rare would be 22 energy, 21 energy, and 20. All the way up to legendary would be 25 energy for the cabin. Keeping in mind that, like they said, they doubled the energy of pretty much everything. So uh, something that was 4 energy before is now 8 energy. So this seems kind of crazy, but when you consider the fact that they doubled all the energy of everything, it's not so crazy. Generators. We invite you to test a variant in which heavy generators will give one unit more energy than light generators. In order to keep all generators re relevant in battles, we've made changes to their parameters. So the big G would then give you two energy, and amp here would give you, say, four, but the PU1 charge is a just generally a heavier energy, or a heavier uh, generator, so that one will give you five instead. And the, the list goes on, as far as, like, see, the Thor would only give you eight energy, versus an Apollo would give you nine, 
So something like this, I can actually see being very, very good for uh, bringing back things like the Apollo or the P1 charge. The Apollo and the P1 charge are probably the worst two generators to use right now because they are, they're overshadowed by the Ampere and the Thor. So by changing this, they're going to make the Apollo a little bit more or have a, relevant, a relevance to it that the Thor does not have by increasing the energy by one. But it is a heavier generator. I think that, that kind of makes sense. I, I'm, I'm with it. I'd like to see how, how it goes on the test server. An important change would be the addition of a progression of hardware energy drain within the same type. Since there is now no change in power consumption as rarity increases, the lower to rarity counterparts are much less in demand than their advanced version, as they should be. I did not grind to get an RN seal just to use whatever that blue radiator is, the, the Tamir, whatever. That's actually the, that's the, the other one. Anyway, with this change, it will be more difficult to mount all the best on the car, and the players have to make compromises and experiment by replacing some parts with counterparts of lower rarities. I don't really like that. Like I said, I did not spend all my time grinding the best of the best just to be forced to use the basics. Come on. So these changes, the special engines. Hardcore is still zero energy. Dunhorse and Razorback is one. As we go up to Epic, Hot Red is zero, but the Cheetah, Colossus, Golden Eagle, and Oppressor is two energy. Uh, Legendary is three. Now for radiators, common is one, rare is one, epic is two. Now I don't know how they're gonna affect like the R2 chills um, stat because I believe as it sits right now, aside from the speed perk of the RN seal, the R2 chill is pretty much similar to the RN seal unless you're moving at high speeds. So essentially being able to put two R2 chills in place of one RN seal will probably be much more efficient than one RN seal. Because if, if, it, if it is correct and one R2 chill does the same cooling as an R and seal minus the perk, then you're going to get double the cooling effect from an R2 chill. So I don't know if, uh, if that's going to be the, the final case, but I could see that being a bit of, a, of an issue. <laughs> We're going to see a lot more R2 chills in the wasteland. Same thing with the Timir and the Shiver. One energy to two. Um, the, the detectors, the Maxwell one energy Doppler, two. Pretty cool. I mean, I guess Maxwell is not that great. You know, I, I don't think you can see things behind cover with Maxwell and doesn't have the range of a Doppler. I'm pretty sure that's the difference. Uh, Oculus verifier, difference in energy. The better cloak, more energy. The Yeti, three energy instead of, you know, one or two. I mean, so you guys can see they're just, as you go up in, in rarity, you're increasing the energy. Holy crap, Tormentor, five energy. Wow, that's a bit much. Days is going to be 7 energy. So they're more than doubling a lot of this, actually. Power unit is going to be 5 energy. Power unit is very, very specialized, so that, that might make sense. Amamori, 3 energy. Oh, brother. I mean, keeping in mind that, you know, well, we're going to have, like, 25 energy cabins with, uh, hold on, what's, what's the, uh, with 10, 10 energy, so you got 35 energy, roughly. Yeah, that's going to be insane. So you're going to have like 35 energy to work with. So, you know, having something that costs five energy just for a piece of hardware might not be that bad. So they uh, changed the power consumption of all these weapons. Again, I'm, I'm not going to like read through every single uh, change here, but uh, most things more than doubled in power consumption. Some things not quite doubled. Porcupine instead of three is seven energy now. You know, Capcam went from two to five energy again keeping in mind that you can go like 35 energy now kaiju all the way up to 23 energy so they had to make sure that you couldn't put two of those on a car yeah so they're definitely changing a lot of stuff now as far as testing guys i i have some big news that i got to share with you guys i am going to be on the testing server hands down i am going to be on the testing server so yeah stay tuned for live streams on the test server if you guys want to hang out with me on twitch or YouTube, follow me on twitch.tv slash shock radio. So when I go live on the test server, you can hang out and uh, we can test stuff together. We understand that such changes may cause some vehicles to become unavailable. 
but these tweaks can potentially increase the diversity of builds in the future. We ask you to build vehicles of different power score levels on a test server and upload them to the exhibition and then give detailed feedback based on the results. In general, do you like the idea of energy scaling? Do you agree with the changes of cabins, generators, modules, and weapons? If you agree partially, please specify what you don't like about them. What can you suggest us to change additionally? Um, these are just instructions on how to get to the test server. I mean, these changes are so big, they're gonna have one round of test server from February 22nd to the 25th. Then they're gonna take a look at all the feedback and run a whole nother round of test server from March 1st to March 3rd. And like I said, I will be on these test servers, guys. So definitely stay tuned with me, follow me on Twitch, YouTube. And if you guys have requests you wanna test, especially my console friends that don't have access to the test server, I'll be there to test whatever you guys want me to test. My testing will be based on the feedback that you guys give me live. Otherwise, I'm just going to be <laughs> cluelessly just doing stuff, uh, having fun. So leave constructive feedback, all that good stuff. I mean, what do you guys think of these, these changes? Uh, I, I think it's going to be pretty interesting. I'm curious to see what it does. I'm not, I'm not so hateful or I'm not, um, I'm not feeling too negative about these changes. I think the alternative ram damage mechanics needed to happen and changes in energy consumption and energy supply parts isn't happening right away, but it is a, an interesting concept. So we don't have to panic too much about that. And I do have some pretty big news. I am a full cross out partner now. So you guys are going to see me playing on PC much more, making YouTube videos for PC, all that good stuff. I really appreciate you guys watching the video, hanging out with me, chatting in discord, all that good stuff. You know, let me know what you think in the comments below. A special shout out goes out to all of our Wasteland supporters joining the YouTube channel, helping kind of keep this content alive and supporting me as a small time creator. Really appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching and I'll definitely see you guys in the next video.